Good morning, everybody. Today is photo P day 1.2. Um, we just went over the the uh, object select tool, etc., like that, and the crop tool. But we're going to go to the seventh tool down, and it usually starts with the spot healing tool. And these are the four tools we're going to go through. As you can see, it's got the small little triangle, and it's got the spot healing tool, the healing brush the patch tool, and the red-eye tool. I'm going to go through all four of these, and I want you to play with those. After we're done, of course, you're going to have play time when I go through all those. So let's go through the first one. It's the spot healing tool. It's really kind of cool. It's similar to the clone, but what happens is the, the clone stamp, or the stamp tool, is that it's not going to pick up anything from what you tell it to. And let's get a little closer first while I'm talking about this. And you'll see over here that I've got this pad here. And these lines are here. Now, if I went to the cloning tool, I'd have to actually put a place to pick up the actual color. And then I would take that color and place it over to say this dark line. Well, that doesn't happen with a spot healing uh, brush tool. It actually lets you or lets the computer figure out and it takes around, I guess, all the information around it and blends it together. So when I do this, you'll see a red line happen. It's pretty cool something like that. And notice when I let go, the computer takes over. It's going to take a moment. I did an awful lot. Do, do, do. Give it a second. Give it a second. And notice everything goes away. Now, I can still see very faintly, and it's very faint, where the actual touchpad was. But notice the defined lines are gone. The computer's actually picking up all the information around it and what's in its environment closely around it, and then makes the decision about that. In, in Photo P, it's pretty impressive. So if I move over here, I'm going to come over to my pen, and I'm going to see what it does with this pen. I've done this before, so I know the, the outcome. But again, I'm going to go over one more thing before I do the pen. Notice the brush size. I can come here. I can change my brush size. I can change my hardness, whatever I want to do. So it works really, really well. But for right now, I'm going to use the 15, what we have right here. Okay? So pop this here. Ugh craziness. It's just driving me nuts today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and watch what I do. Nope. Come here. And anything that's in the red, it will take into consideration. Okay? So notice when I let go, it's going to do some thinking. It's going to pick up the blue, notice, and the lines and the numbers. Now, this is pixelated, so you can't see the definitive numbers, but it does a really, really good job overall of what it is. I can see some blemishes here. I can see a few here. If I come over here, bam, it goes this way. If I want to take care of this, it goes away. And I can touch things up. But notice it's copying. It's taking this section over here and replacing it over here. So no, it's not going to be perfect. But if you're looking for something simple to go and get away, that would be – it's it's amazing. Um, I would use this mostly on, say, if you take a beautiful picture outdoors and you have power lines. Go over those power lines. It'll take in the information of, of the sky around it or the trees around it, and it blends it right in. It works meticulously. So it's a really powerful tool, and I would suggest you use it. Yes, it is in Photoshop also, and I will be doing that one too. So tool we're going to look at, as we just finished with the spot healing brush tool, will be the healing brush tool. Now, the difference between, as you can see in the icons, is there's a plus and there's nothing. So if I come to the healing brush tool, it is almost identical to um, the clone stamp. So if I want to get rid of this line right here, I'm going to click on the line, and it's going to ask me up here to pick a clone source. Okay, It's either hold the K button or the Alt button. I go with the Alt button. Come here, and I go to Alt. But again, before we do that, go to our brush. I have my hardness down to zero because I want a nice soft edge. I, I don't want it to be too hard. Um, and we'll bring this down just a little bit more because it's just a simple line. Yeah, it looks good. Let's go a little bit bigger. Okay. Click over here. Again, it's asking me to, to look for a Alt or the K. So I'm going to come here and go Alt. Notice there's a plus sign, just like the clone stamp. I click on it. That's my information. Notice when I go over with my brush, you can see the line go away. And it fades away. And notice where my plus is. But notice here's the thing I don't like about it. Look at this, how it's picking up the edge. It's picking up the edge of where the the, um, the wood is. And you can see it on the on the, you know, the actual piece of paper. That's just me picking up, you know, and my brush picking these things up. Be careful where you get your information from. I might have wanted to pick it up maybe down here instead of up here, but you can also notice there's this white haze. 
One of the things I notice about when you do cloning, it makes things a little lighter. And that's one of the things that we have to worry about, okay, in Photopia. I'm already working on it. I've got, uh, I can show you how to fix that a little bit later. But just for now, know that the healing brush tool is similar to the clone stand. And again, I'll go over that uh, in the probably in the next day or two, too, just so you guys, you know, have a reference for all this again. Now, the third one, let me just move this over a little bit more. Tool is going to be the patch tool. And the patch tool is pretty cool, okay? So notice it's got a patch, it's a square with stitches around it. So what it's gonna do is we're gonna take information from one spot and we're gonna cover it with another spot. But before we do that, we need to select it. So let's use our object selection tool. Again, when in, in photo peel, I gotta cross over. Whatever's in the crosshairs is gonna be picked up. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that white too. And I got the plan also. So as I select it, boom does a really good job. I'm not going to go in and fine tune it um, for this video, but I would go and fine tune it. But watch what happens with the patch tool. There are several things up here. Notice again, it's got replace, replace, you know, a unite. I can subtract and I can do my intersections, but there's also a source and there's a target. Okay. It's got to be on source. So when I click on this, I'm clicking, left clicking and holding, and I'm moving it and notice it's picking up the information from over here. See that little star there? It's right there. So I can actually move it over, kind of line up the grain. It's kind of look cool right about up, right about there. And I let go. And notice it fills it in. But again, here again is this white haze. Okay? And that white haze will stay. Um, one of the ways I get rid of it is I will go ahead and deselect this. Control D also. And again, I'm going to pick up the clone stamp. And I can just use it, or I can do anything from, and we'll talk about this more, about using my vibrance, hue, and saturation, do whatever I want to change that. Of course, if you're going to use your vibrant, vibrance, hue, and saturation, or color balance, um, or any kind of photo filters on it, or contrast or brightness, please let the selection stay on because you only want to affect this area, not the whole thing. But that's how you can use the patch tool too. Now, the last thing is, is going to be the red eye tool. It's really simple. If you have photographs that have red eyes, you know, which is very rare nowadays, um, you know, most phones take care of that with the, the, the flash. But notice if you have red eyes and, oh, I got a red eyes right here. The red eye tool works really simple. What it does, it's going to select the red and you'll see that I've actually made this brush almost perfect to the eye. And I made a circle. Real simple. I can add to it, subtract. This looks familiar up here. Um, but let's go my red eye. Notice I've got my brushes very large. I've kind of made it the perfect circle. And what I do is I go, bam. And notice it picks up the red and I didn't do all of it right there. So it's that side there, that side there. But notice it ignores any other color but red. It's pretty cool. Um, if you do have bad photographs, take a picture of them or scan them in, bring them in, hit this. But most programs have this even on um, you know, uh, phone apps they have the red eye and it's easy to do but i just wanted to go over it just so i didn't leave it out let's come back here to this one real simple i made this pretty large bam got a little red here and notice i'm getting rid of all the red and it works out really really well so then when i come back to zero the person has their pupils and they're not red and she doesn't look psycho so those are the things that i want you to look, look for today take care of all those tools there are four of them underneath there uh, i love the patch tool and i love the uh the healing brush tool. Those are two very, very uh, important and very strong tools to use. I use them a lot. So those are the two I'd be focusing on. But yes, it's playtime. Let's get it done. I want to see how you guys are manipulating the original photo and the actual photo when it's done. Okay. Have a good day and stay strong.